187. Mother on that beat. Oh. Hello, everyone. This is Ryan Hamer and Ryan Anderson. And today we have two pieces to talk to you about. The first piece is the Lesko cave paintings. Okay, Ryan, where are these cave paintings located? They're located in southwestern France. Okay. Uh, I've, o- I've always heard about these cave paintings. I've never understood why they're so significant. They're significant because they were done nearly 20,000 years ago. And for, for how ancient they are, they display some pretty advanced techniques. Oh, okay. So can you give us an example of some of these techniques? Yeah. So for the specific picture we chose, the bowl we have here, you notice how um, they have the back legs behind the front legs. They're, they show some perspective and depth, which is really advanced for 20,000 years ago. The fact that they were able to draw so well um, shows that art was pretty important to them. Um, it's possible that it was one of the best ways they had to express themselves religiously and spiritually, because we don't really know why exactly they, ha- they, they did art. The cave contains nearly 2,000 figures, and most of them are horses and other large animals. They, their main source of food at the time was reindeer, but they, there isn't a single drawing of one. So I guess it shows that they worship the larger animals. In the book, Let's Go, Movement, Space, and Time by Norbert Agelot, it stresses the importance of why we need to preserve this. It's one of the greatest discoveries of mankind, and it was discovered in 1940. Today it's even closed off to the public and only the only the researchers can go in there only a few hours a week. Okay so our next artwork is the artwork I chose by the artist street artist Banksy and the title is The Banality of the Banality of Evil done in oil on top of oil on a canvas in 2013. So who exactly is Banksy? Banksy, actually, no one knows who Banksy is besides a few other street artists. Banksy is um, completely anonymous. Okay, so tell us about your piece, the banality of, of the banality of evil. Okay, so there's kind of a background story with this piece. Banksy actually went into a thrift store and purchased this painting and took it back and did his own painting over the top and he added in that Nazi soldier sitting on the bench and then what he did afterwards is he re-donated the piece back to the thrift shop and the thrift shop is a thrift shop for charity so all the proceeds go to charity which are um, for people with HIV AIDS and the piece is currently um, it was set up for bid for seventy six thousand dollars And now I think it has sold for $610,000. So what exactly is going on in this painting? Okay, so the painting itself is, well, the only part of the painting that Banksy actually did is the Nazi soldier. Um, He painted on top of original painting, which is why it says it's done in oil on oil. And the phrase, the banality of evil, refers to the idea that ordinary people can commit acts of horror when following orders. And I believe that's why he painted the Nazi soldier, because um, the soldier is still an ordinary person, but when the uniform is put on and he's following orders, awful, terrible things happen. And I think he's poking fun at this by calling it the banality of the banality of evil, because it's just the Nazi soldier sitting there. There's no action taking place or anything, but he's sitting in a uh, mundane landscape looking out at... um, at the scenery as if he's a normal person even though he still has his uniform on. There's actually a quote that I think directly relates to this piece by Banksy himself and he says the greatest crimes in the world are not committed by people who break the rules it's the people who follow orders who drop bombs and massacre villages. That's a really good quote and it, and it puts a lot of things into perspective. Well, I think that's all the time we have. This has been Ryan Anderson. And Ryan Hamer. And we are closing out.